Hello, this is Professor Science, here to talk to you about all things scientific. And today we'll be talking about the theory of evolution. Now, first off, let's get semantics out of the way. A theory, as it's used within the scientific community, is generally understood to be a set of rules and guidelines by which a process works. Whereas a hypothesis is how we think something might work. Many theories exist by this explanation. Musical theory, for example. Or a theory of mathematics. Point being, anything which is the subject of academic study must have a theoretical framework. Now, evolution is accepted to be a real process, but the details of which that process works have yet to be fully explained. You see, it's a lot like gravity. We know that gravity exists, but we still have yet to successfully explain how it works. It may work by a series of particles known as gravitons, or a series of energy waves. We're not really sure. Even Darwin himself admitted he did not understand the entire process. But he did come up with a very good and reasonable explanation for natural selection from which we base all theories today. Uh -huh. Our evidence for the existence of evolution comes from observations made within the animal kingdom and such things, as well as experiments performed at various universities and research organizations, mostly involving fruit flies. Strange, but that's how we get it. These results are reproducible and have been shown to produce the same results around the world. Now what we understand of the process of evolution is what's been come to be called natural selection by which animals are born with certain traits which allow them to survive better in the wild or civilization, what have you. These traits are then passed down to their offspring which create a newer trait within the entire species on a whole because they can outcompete other members of that species. The other process which we understand to drive evolution is random mutation, caused by, of all things, cosmic rays from outer space, which impact and change our genetic structures. Now let's come back to Charles Darwin. He was the man who first described the process of natural selection. Now we know today he was wrong on many points. Point being, he got the ball rolling on the whole explanation and process and study of evolution. And that, in a nutshell, is a brief description of this process of natural selection, evolution, random mutation, uh, Charles Darwin, and other such things. Thank you for joining Professor Science, and I'll see you again soon.